All right, so my phone's blowing up, my messengers are blowing up, and that's exactly what I didn't want. The whole reason that I was doing these videos is so I didn't have to talk about it, and I'm trying to make that clear, but I guess people just, I, I don't know what they think. So let me kind of like, Put it this way every time I talk about this it takes me from here let's, let's show it. it takes me from a mood up here to a mood way wait no we're not gonna go that far down but you kind of get the idea so I only want to talk about it once I've said that numerous times there's no reason for you to call me and try to ask questions like you're trying to get insider information there's no reason to send me a text message and ask because I'm not gonna respond I'm not. You know, I need to keep my mood level way up here. I don't want to be way down there. It's that simple. But I know the one thing everybody's curious about is how long have I known? Well, so let me start back at the beginning. Um, when I was born, the doctor smacked me on the butt and I turned around crying like a little baby does and I said, don't you smack me on the butt without pulling my hair and uh, then and now I don't have any hair oh wait that's a little too far back okay let me go back to the when the cancer started um, in February when I was building the goat barn the videos are on uh, YouTube and maybe it was a little bit before that actually because in hindsight I noticed things over winter that didn't seem right and um, to kind of explain, from starting about November until February every year, I work out pretty, pretty hard, six, seven days a week, an hour or more of cardio plus weightlifting, and that's how I stay in shape over winter. And I've done it enough years in a row that I know how quickly I put on muscle and. I know how quickly I usually ramp up my weight because I drop it back down some where I haven't lifted in several months. And I just wasn't making the progress that I thought I should. And in all honesty, from November until February, I actually felt like I was getting weaker. So it was kind of like, it wasn't an obvious change, but when I stopped lifting weights in February, I was not able to lift as much as I was lifting in November. <laughs> and it was crazy how quickly it happened too. Anyways, so, um, but the, the biggest indication was in February I was lifting the goat barn. Um, I didn't have a lot of energy. I, uh, I, I was struggling to lift things that I would normally be able to lift. And I was like, what is going on? Well, there was, toward the end of building the goat barn, which still technically isn't done. Here it is August. I still have the door to put on and a few other things to button up, but I just never got around to it because I schedule my projects literally on a spreadsheet that I'm going to do every year with their cost. And, you know, every year it's a rush to get everything done. But the goat barn didn't get finished. It got good enough. And uh, I stopped to move on to another project um, but while I was building the goat barn I woke up one morning and I kind of felt like I had slept on my neck wrong like my neck was sore and I walked into the bathroom and I kind of went like this to like because sometimes I grab a hold of like the muscle and just kind of squeeze you know if you get a sore neck kind of like massage your own neck and when I did that, I felt like a little knot, like right here, pea-sized. And this was toward the end of February. And I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. And I also noticed, too, that my lymph node right here was a little sore. And I know that when your lymph nodes are sore or swollen, that you have an infection. I've, I've always known that. And since I don't get sick, stuff like that sticks out like, you know, a sore thumb, for lack of a better term. 
but I know my body and in my mind I was thinking oh whatever this infection is will be gone in a few days no big deal and then just a few days after that's when they found the first COVID case in Kentucky and uh I noticed that, that that place kept getting bigger and bigger and I was like, you know, by the time I got concerned about it getting bigger and bigger and I didn't seem like I was getting any better, then, you know, COVID cases were popping up all over the place and I was like, I'm, I'm not going to the doctor, that's where the sick people are and it would be kind of silly to go there and put myself at risk, you know, when COVID first started and uh, everybody thought that you know everybody was going to die you know you know how the scare was when it first started so anyways I just kind of kept an eye on it and kept trying to do the stuff I needed to do and I I kept getting weaker and I kept getting like you know the bone pain and just other weird things that would happen that were you know I kind of felt like I my mind and body was kind of in tune more with like aches and pains because every little one it's like that I never noticed before all of a sudden it just seemed like I was getting them all the time so um, anyways fast forward to I think it was May when kind of my fear of the whole COVID thing had been reduced drastically and uh, since I don't have a a medical doctor um, you know I, I don't get sick so I don't really see a doctor regularly so I can't really say I got a primary care physician because I just I, I don't see doctors um, but I've got someone who I consider a friend of mine um, and at one time was also a client and he's a doctor and I was like you know I've, I've seen him before in the past and maybe I can get him in and plus um, you know it by the time that I called him I, I was really starting to get concerned so I called uh, Dr. Gallenstein in Maysville uh, thank you very much for getting me in very quickly and um, I went in and saw him and we, we sat around and talked a lot and then we got down to why I was there and uh, he, he took a look at it and he said uh, we're not going to have the talk today but we're probably going to have to have the talk about cancer in the future and he referred me to an ENT in Maysville, Dr. Conrad and Dr. Conrad wanted a CT scan done before I came into his office, so we did the CT scan at Metaview Regional Hospital there in Maysville. And then the CT from after, once the CT scan was done, I got into his office. And with him being an ENT, he did the normal, you know, ear, nose, throat inspection, cleaned, impacted wax out of my. If you've never had this done, by the way you you should have this done like you think your ears are clean and I don't use q-tips but if you think your ears are clean you should go see an ENT and have them clean your ears anyways so Dr. Conrad did his normal thing uh, ear nose throat check my ears cleaned out earwax that was an ungodly amount I was almost embarrassed but he said that's everybody like don't matter how many times you clean your ears they're gonna be impacted it was like a lot um, put a scope up my nose um, to look at my throat in the back of my mouth and then after he did that he said this is gonna sound really weird but I need to stick my hands really deep into the back of your mouth and of course I'm always cracking jokes and I said hey you didn't even buy me supper yet or you haven't even taken me out to dinner yet or something like that and him and his 
nurses all started busting up laughing. But anyway, so he did uh, use his fingers to check my tonsils and he told me that my right tonsil was more swollen. Uh, what well, was a different size than the left one. It was swollen uh, quite a bit. So then he discussed getting me in to have a biopsy done. And originally he said it made sense to him to have the biopsy done on my tonsils because there was problems in the lymph nodes on both sides. Even though the growth was on this side, the lymph nodes I had problems on both sides. And he said generally that would indicate something like an infection centrally in the body and your tonsils are right smack dab in the center of your head about the midline no matter how you dissect it and uh anyways i don't know if it was the insurance or who it was but they ended up deciding to do a biopsy on this growth by the time i got to metaview i was actually confused because when i went there she goes we're about to do a biopsy on a mass on your throat and i was like well Dr. Conrad told me you were going to do the tonsils, and now I'm like all confused. So, again, I don't know when that changed, but it did. And he called me. Uh, the, the people that did the biopsy said it would be like three to five business days. And Dr. Conrad called me like two days after the biopsy and told me it was going to sell carcinoma. And he was going to refer me to University of Cincinnati the Barrett Cancer Research Center to Dr. Patil there and uh, I, I don't know like 26 doctor visits later that brings you to now so that's kind of the backstory how it started what I first noticed how I felt you know being more tired being sore not being able to do what I normally do because I felt weaker is kind of like the the onset of this and then getting the little pea-sized growth on my neck which by the way got to be about the size of a this is how big it is now that's probably three inches but it got to be about this size in about two weeks it grew very very quickly um, it is literally right next to the carotid artery artery on this side of my uh, on this side of my neck and I don't know if you can see it can you see it anyway so the reason why I decided to do these videos I uploaded two videos um, one was the garden grow bags video where I was kind of careless well let me tell you what the other video is so the garden grow bag in the tomato canning video where um, I had been careful to always video my face from this side up up until that point of those videos and I got kind of careless because of well where I could place the camera and where I had to do the work and it ended up that I was showing a lot of this side and once you see this side you can tell there was something obviously wrong and social media my Instagram my Facebook my YouTube um, I had several people asking me what was wrong and I had already pre-recorded the first three or four videos um, and they were already upload loaded to YouTube but they were scheduled for a year from now um, and I just decided to go ahead and go public because I didn't want to answer all the questions um, so keep that in mind don't text me and expect me to reply to you don't call my phone and expect me to talk about it I'm, I'm not going to I gotta keep my mental emotional level up here and to talk about it or text about it just immediately drops drops me down so you know be respectful of that and uh, we'll talk about something else on the next video